Hello fellow coffee botherers, I'm Kev from coffeeblog.co.uk and in this video I'm going to be demonstrating how to make a flat white. First thing to say about this, when it comes to making flat white at home or any coffee at home, you can do whatever you like and you can call it whatever you like. If you've got your own espresso machine, you can play around with things and figure out how to make what you believe to be the perfect flat white. It really doesn't matter what anybody else says it is or thinks of it. But my plan with this video is just to point you in the right direction. I'm not going to get into the origins of flat white in this video as it's a hugely debated subject regarding whether it came from Australia or New Zealand, but wherever it originated, most baristas agree just about on what a flat white is. To me, the two important things about flat white are taste and texture. This, by the way, is also, in my humble opinion, the main way to distinguish between different milkies. It's not purely about how much foam is on the top, it's about texture and taste. And when I say taste, I'm talking mainly about intensity, as flat white should be more of a punch in terms of flavour compared to cappuccino or latte. About the texture, the texture of flat white is like liquid velvet. That's the best way I can describe it. This is tricky now in terms of distinguishing between different milkies because the flat white texture is so popular now that many coffee shops will use this kind of texture for cappuccino too and latte. And this is what led me to recording this video where I show how to make what I believe to be an old school, more original cappuccino in reaction to a comment someone left asking how to recreate what they believe to be a true cappuccino. So flat white is a stronger milky compared to latte and cappuccino with a texture of liquid velvet and with an intense coffee flavour. They're usually served in cups or glasses ranging from about five to eight ounces, about 150 to 250 mil. And they're usually made with double espresso or double ristretto. You can use whatever milk or milk alternative you like. Personally, I use full fat cow's milk. I haven't eaten meat since 2009, but I'm not full vegan. And so far, I've not experienced any milk alternative that I think comes close to full fat milk. Unfortunately, full fat cow's milk. That being said, I know there are a few newer milk alternatives I've not tried yet, so this could change in the near future. So making a flat white and I'm using the Sage Bambino. This is the Bambino, not the Bambino Plus. Click here somewhere for the video I've done on the Bambino. Or one of the videos I've done, I've done a couple and I will do more. So I'm gonna do a flat white using double espresso. As I said earlier, you can use espresso, you can use ristretto. If you want to get into to using ristretto, there's loads of videos on YouTube telling you how to pull ristretto shots, and I will do a video on ristretto, but I'm gonna make it easy with this video and just do espresso. And it does depend, in my humble opinion, on what coffee you're using. And the coffee I'm using today is quite simple in terms of the acidity. It's not got a really sort of funky acidity or anything like that. It is my Cacao Uganda blend from the Coffee Works, cworks.co.uk and use the discount code YT25 for 25% off, shameless plug. This works well for flat white in my humble opinion. The reason I would want to do a ristretto rather than an espresso would be if I was using maybe a slightly lighter roasted coffee or any coffee that had a bit more acidity and particularly if it had sort of interesting acidity that you wouldn't necessarily want from a milky. I would want a little bit more one dimensional, strong, powerful coffee taste in a flat white rather than sort of interesting acidity. But I'm using espresso for this flat white. I'm using the single doser attachment with Bellows with the Eureka Mignon Speciality. Now, if I can get it using the razor tool to trim the top of the coffee off to make sure we've got the right headspace between the coffee and the shower screen, which is an important part, an important part of the process. It also ensures that you've got a level surface. So if you've tamped slightly off, 
that levels it out. I've seen people saying you shouldn't use these. I don't quite know why, because I think these are really good for making sure you've got the right headspace every time and a level surface. I really like the Razor tool. So 32 seconds, 42 grams, should have stopped it slightly sooner, but you know what, not bad. Okay, now to do the milk, and I've just changed the one tip on the Bambino to the four hole steam tip, just to show you. So the Bambino Plus and the Brista Pro come with a four hole tip, whereas the Bambino comes with a single hole tip. And I just prefer the four hole tip. I'm gonna show you a couple of ways it can fail. I'm gonna show you not enough air being pulled in, and I'm gonna show you too much air being pulled in. Enough spinning, and then drop the jug. Get that hissing sound going. And now, lifting the jug up and just keeping it spinning now while it's heating up. And that feels about right. I'm used to gauging the heat of the uh, milk by the touch. So I don't bother with the thermometer these days, but that's, I reckon, about 60. So that is an example of not enough air pulled in. So as you can see, virtually nothing came up to the surface. So I didn't get enough air into that. So, this time I carried on aerating for longer and we've got stiff microfoam. I'll show you what happens. So, it's pourable. But that is really what I would call cappuccino because you've got a stiffer foam and it's a bit blobby and that is not an old school cappuccino but it's more of the kind of cappuccino I would expect these days. And I'll now show you what will happen if you don't create microfoam, but you break the surface of the milk too much and you're actually creating what I call old school cappuccino foam. So I'll show you that as well. You hear that roaring sound? That's bigger bubbles being created. So you're not getting a ripping paper sound, you're getting like a roaring. Now if I just heat it up a 
heat it for a bit, just distribute that froth. see from the one that's thicker, bigger bubbled broth. And if you look at how much it's stretched, we've come right up to the top, well, near the top of the spout, and it's stiff. So if we tramp all that, that's what we get. <laughs> And that's fine if that's what you want. So if you want a traditional, like 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s cappuccino, then do that, it's dead easy. And if you grab a spoon, you can do that. And then chuck some chocolate on the top, make it into a proper, old school cappuccino and why not if that's what you like but well, this video isn't about cappuccino it is about flat white so these are the ways you can go wrong you can under aerate with microfoam so you are creating microfoam you know the small bubbles but you don't do it for long enough that's what i did first time or you can over aerate which is where you create microfoam but you do it for too long you end up with too much foam and you can deal with that if you pour from jug to jug things like that you can reduce that a bit but the best thing to do is to try and get the balance right which will hopefully show you now Still doing that subtle aeration. Not got a roaring sound like I had a minute ago, just a flipping paper sound, a hissy sound. And that is enough. I can just tell from looking at it that that's aerated enough. And that's about hot enough. And that looks perfect to me. There's definitely air in there, I've definitely stretched it, but I don't think I've overstretched it, so I don't think it's going to be hard to pour, I don't think I'm going to have masses of foam on the top of this flat white, and I think it will be a flat white and not a cappuccino. I'm going to swirl this espresso because it's cacao, you're going to blend has a really chunky crema. Hopefully that's all right. Perfect, I think. Well, perfect texture. For some reason, I always pour really bad latte out on camera that's my excuse and texture wise that's perfect to me it's that liquid velvet texture that we're after and intensity is perfect really nice intense flat white but there's nothing interesting going on in terms of acidity or anything like that there's no sort of really overly fruity or citrus notes coming through which might clash with the milk and make for a weird milky it's an intense, sort of more one-dimensional coffee flavour. Which is what I think is perfect for flat white. So there you go, that's how to make a flat white. Hopefully this will help you to work on making your own perfect flat whites at home. If you need more help on creating the perfect milk texture, click here for Lance Hedrick's video, which is really good. Thank you very much for watching. Please click the like button, thanks. Apparently it does something to the YouTube algorithm. 
and more people end up watching the video. So please do that. Cheers. And if you enjoyed this video, then why not click here to watch another one? And don't forget to become an official Coffee Botherer. You need to click this image around here somewhere to subscribe and to become a fully accredited Coffee Botherer, also known as Patreon supporter. Just go to patreon.com forward slash Coffee Tatty bye.